Trevor, what do you know about um, Denmark then? Um, yeah, that's legal, a legal pot, windmills, flat, windmills, cheese. Yeah. Oh, Lurpak. Do you remember Lurpak? Lurpak, I like that. I'll tell you what, they've got great butter in Denmark. I don't think Swedes eat their Danish butter, but in England we eat it, didn't we? If well, it's posh stuff. Swedish butter as well, but Danish butter. Are we on, by the way? Oh, sorry, I've turned it on. I okay. forgot. Sorry. Um, hello, everyone, and welcome to this uh, Danish edition of Beer Sweden television. Uh, now, the reason that we are uh, talking Denmark, we can't actually... Can you do Danish accent? No, not at all. I'm not even going to try. It's one of the only... I have to be honest with you, Finland I couldn't get that course. That's a completely different language from anything else. Uh, but if we go to Norway, it's not, not an issue, really. You can understand pretty much everything's being said there, if you speak Swedish, by the way. Uh, but go to Denmark, and I just can't get any of it. Can't get any of it at all. No, it's really it's difficult. Big word or something like that. It's very, very guttural sort of sound to it. Um, but anyway, uh, the reason that we're having this episode and we are going to be tasting these beers is because, I have to give you a little bit of background history, when I was at the Stockholm Beer Festival, you'll see my reports on it on the blog, actually wrote quite a lot about the Danish brewers that came over to the festival this year. They were actually, I think, one of the most interesting elements of the whole show. Uh, they were brought over by Elixir Wine. Actually, Trev, could you throw that little link up? Elixir Wine. S here. Uh, really uh, good initiative by you guys. Uh, brought over, a, I don't know how many, I think six, seven Danish uh, craft brewers to the festival in Stockholm. And I have to say, some of the beers that I actually tried on that stand over a very happy couple of hours of my life were some of the best beers of the show, I have to be honest with you. And I know I talk a lot about the steps, and I'm talking enormous, gigantic strides that are being made by the, uh, by the Swedish micro brewing or craft scene. Um, but I still think they've got a little bit of learn. I think those Danish boys can actually teach them a thing or two. Uh, some very interesting, adventurous, um, avant-garde sort of beers that I tried. One with snooze in it, for instance. The other one's brewed with seaweed. All sorts of strange stuff. Trev, you'd have loved it. Uh, now, one of the breweries that I actually really did sort of latch onto right at the end of my tasting was this one. Um, I'm going to hold up uh, both the bottles. Uh, the first one is this one. Son of Necron. Do you know what Necron is? I actually did a little Google trend. Not a necromancer or yeah, something. Yeah, is it some sort of devil or sort of sort of, sort of um, you know? I think it's actually even a comic character, uh, and it's a depiction of death. So we're like re we're really square, man, because we don't know it. Yeah, we know nothing. We know nothing. But a, but a, essentially, it's some sort of underworld sort of um, association, anyway. Um, as are pretty much all the beers that come out of this brewery, because the brewery's name is Bruggeriet um, Jevel Brugg. Uh, I probably mispronounced that, but in, in English, basically, it means the Devil's Brew. Okay, so it's the brewery Devil Brew. Uh, and they produce a lot of these very um, atheist uh, brews. Uh, now, Son of Necron is actually coming out in the System Belaga um, probably today, to be honest with you, certainly this week. Um, now, the, you're going to get some fresh stuff. I've actually got a slightly vintage bottle. Uh, it is a porter, it is 6.5%, um, and it, is, it comes with an extremely high rating. Um, the other one that we're going to try today is this one, Godless which is an imperial stout. This one's slightly heavier, 8.9% from the same brewery. Um, and again, I tried this at Good the Beer Festival. A uh, Gudelos. Is that what it is? Oh, something like that, Gudelos. Uh, I don't know what Son of Necron is in Danish. Son of Necron. Something like that. I do apologize, Denmark. Uh, but anyway, this is uh, basically godless, is the translation there. Um, and it's got a great story behind that. I'll come back to it. Which one first, Trev, should be the Son of Necron? Not only because, oh, by the way, this is coming out in the system Belaget. I think it's on the 15th of November, slightly later, a couple of weeks afterwards. Uh, so you're going to have to wait a little bit longer for that one. Let's start with this one. Now, I've got a little cheat sheet here, people. I don't normally do this, but to be honest with you, I don't know an awful lot about these beers yet. Um, let's pour this one up. Uh, Oi, oh, oh, look at this, people, look. This is a porter, remember? Look at the colour of this thing. Absolutely amazing. Look at it. Huh? Black as night, black as sin, really, Trev, don't you think? This really does look like something that's been spewed up from the underworld, don't you think? Huh? Satanic. Oops made it. Satanic black, I call it. Uh, lovely soap bubbly type of head. A little bit sort of yeasty, you know, like when you're sort of making bread, that sort of bubbly dough 
sort of action going on there. Excuse me, am I wrong? But am I getting to Doffs of Bulge Tricker? Doffs? Uh, sorry, Doffs. Doffs, what's going on? Swingley? What are you, Sven Jöran? I might have to cut that out. Uh, am I getting smells of Bulge Tricker? You know, the Swedish... Yeah, absolutely, a little bit of that's going on. Very much so. Yeah, a little bit of that. Nice Dandelion and Burdock. Mm. More is sweet berry, very much sweet berry, black currants, and of course loads of chocolate. Coffee, yeah, that's there too. The classics, really. But you've got this lovely sweet berry um, front to this beer. It's it's like one of those chocolate bars that's got the fruit inside it. You know those thin, very sort of exclusive 70, 80 percent cocoa. Uh, chocolate bars that have like cherry liqueur or some sort of berry liqueur inside them. Very much like that. Absolutely delicious nose to it. Stunning stuff. It's also got a little sort of peaty action to it as well. A little, slight little bit of peaty smoke to it. Lovely, lovely stuff. Um, Trev, it may be from Denmark. Got to give it a whirl. Give it a whirl anyway. I bet that's delicious. It's doing all sorts of stuff. It is delicious. There's one thing I will say straight away. Surprisingly, in the mouthfeel, not as fat and creamy as I thought it would be. That was my instant thing. Everything else that I want there is there. But the one thing that threw me straight off there was the fact that I was expecting it to almost sort of be with that, all that sort of fluffiness to it um, in the body. It is 6.5%, but it doesn't quite carry that off in the mouthfeel. I tell you what, there's an awful lot going on in this beer. It's got that lovely smoke element to it. That's coming through very nicely in the mid-end palette. Bitterness, yes. Got a sort of rasping dryness to it as well. And I, what I'm loving about it in particular is this fruit action. Because a lot of these uh, sort of porters or stouts um, are very aggressively, astringently bitter. Uh, you know, roasted, char, uh, sort of notes to them. Uh, and, and sensation to them, and sometimes they're rather unbalanced. This one has got this lovely fruitiness to it, which married to the, you know, this bitterness actually works really well. Very nicely balanced beer. Loving the colour of it too. Um, in terms of ratings, Trev, I'm going to have to knock it down a couple of marks there because it is too thin for me. It's too thin. Um, but having said that, um, I'm going to go all the way up to 4.1. 4.1, Trev. Definitely, good stuff. Good stuff from Denmark, for the Danish judge. The second beer that we're gonna try um, is the Godless. Now, or Gudelos. It's good, that was good actually. It was, that's, that's to me that it's certainly good. I thought it'd probably rubbish. That was good, I'll tell you, if there's anyone from Denmark watching, could you please actually write underneath this video and tell me how good that pronunciation was. I'm not gonna say it again, because it won't get any better than that. Uh, I'm going to pour this one up. Look at that gun smoke coming out of this one. And look at the colour of this one too. Oh my goodness gracious me. And no, the head. That's Whoops. engine oil, isn't it? Whoops, what, 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 what went wrong there, Trev? Look. Oh my dear. Oh my dear God, I'd say. But obviously not with this beer. Um, Godless. Tell you a little story behind it. Got it here. Um, what? You've got something on your face, the other oh, side. What have I got? I don't know what it is. What have I got, Trev? Huh? Black. Is it, is it, is it, it's probably got the plague now because I've been saying all these bad things about God. Well, it's oh. gone now. Uh, um, the, uh, the interesting thing about this beer, and please excuse me for reading, other than the fact 8.9%, we said that before, it's an imperial stout brewed by, uh, you know, this uh, the um, Devil's Brewery in Copenhagen, by the way, um, is that um, for every bottle of this sold, and I like this, um, not that I have any political views, or sorry, religious views, they're not uh, anything to do with this bottle, but this particular brewery has decided that for every single bottle of this beer that is sold, they're going to donate one Danish crown to the Danish Atheist Society. What do you think about that, Trev? I have no comments on that. No comment. Same here. No comment. Makes you smile a little bit, though, doesn't it? Um, now, listen, it might be, obviously, um, something that, um, um, uh, that goes against everything that I was brought up to do, but even so, I'm going to give this beer a whirl. Now, here you've got, again, you've got this berry, um, black currant, red currant action. There's a lot more licorice going on in this one as well. I'm just going to read what they say. Coffee and chocolate, of course. Um, that's pretty much uh, de facto in most of these styles of beers. Um, they've also got, and here it is actually, and actually they're right because I'm saying berries. Uh, they're saying raisin syrup. And actually, when you think about it, 
that's really what it's leading towards. Not really red berry, but more towards dry sort of pruny juice pruny, type. Exactly, prunes, plums, raisins, figgies, fig sort of stuff. Heavy, heavier fruits. Often, actually thinking about it, dried, so that you get that kind of like intensity of that fruit as well. So it doesn't smell particularly fresh, but just intense, very dense, very dense in terms of the smell. But definitely, yes, chocolate, that's there, bitter chocolate, a little bit of tar, a little bit of bonfire notes to it as well. Now, wow. And where this was like slightly thin, this has got it going on. Very oily, quite slick, covers the tongue, really intense very bitter. Uh, I'm not quite sure where the IBUs, the International Bitterness Unit, sit on these things, but this tastes to me far more bitter than Son of Necron. Um, very, very interesting uh, beer. I'm not quite sure what I'd pair this with at the Christmas table. I think this is a sipper, people. I think this is a type of beer that you just have at the end of the meal, maybe with a very intense uh, blue cheese or aged cheddar. I see that working very well with this drink. But otherwise, leave it alone. This is a nasty piece of work. It really is the devil's brew, this one. In terms of rating, Trev, I'm going to go slightly higher. I'm a bit of a sucker for Imperial Stouts, particularly the big boys, uh, and I'm thinking this one's got to be 4.3. 4 I'm going to go up to 4.3. It is that good. Uh, two cracking beers from Denmark. Thank you very much to Elixir Wine for sending them to me. Uh, great job that you're doing. Uh, check out their website. Uh, these are coming out, as I say, over the next couple of weeks in the system Lager in very limited numbers, I understand. So if you want to make sure that you're going to get yourself a bottle, get down to your system Lager pretty early and order them. So, until next time, I think all that there is left to say, Trev, in Danish, Chisel Bills.